The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to worship. Uh, this evening we begin uh, my summer sermon series, uh, which uh, this year is going to be on the book of Romans. Uh, we're going to have, I don't know, nine, ten sermons in a row on the book of Romans, which uh, sounds kind of dull, but it's not, because it's a really great book. Uh, and we'll be kind of working our way through it uh, as it is written. Uh, we will be using order of service number four. I think that's on the blue one. And we start with hymn 801. Please stand for singing. <laughs>
service number four. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light, light of darkness, darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. And, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And, and illuminate your church. Joyous light of glory. Of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. We have come to the setting of the sun. And we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with your voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life. The universe proclaims your glory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation, and we, your creatures, glorify you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. On the church calendar, June 7th is Proper 5. In the Old Testament lesson is uh, from Hosea chapter 5. I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face and in their distress earnestly seek me. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us that he may heal us. He has struck us down and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us. On the third day he will raise us up that we may live before him. Let us know. Let us press on to know the Lord. His going out is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us as the showers, as the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Psalm 119, verses 65 through 72. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The insolent smear me with lies, but with my whole heart I keep your precepts. Their heart is unfeeling like fat, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Our epistle reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 4. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if it is the adherents of the law who are to be heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring, not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to, to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. In hope he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations as he had been told, so shall your offspring be. He did not waken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old. Or 
when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he drew, grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. That is why his, his faith was counted to him as righteousness. But the words it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be counted to us who believe in him, who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who was delivered up for our tres trespasses and raised for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter, verses 9 through 13. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our hymn of the day is number 563.
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The text for our consideration today is our Epistle lesson from Romans chapter 4, where we are told that we are children of Abraham because of our faith. This summer I'll be pe preaching on the Epistle lessons from the book of Romans. Although they will be sermons, it will still be a study of that book, kind of. It's a great book to study. Anytime you study a book of the Bible, you should first look at who it's written from and to whom it's written. That's pretty simple in this case. The book was written by the great missionary to the Gentiles, the Apostle Paul. And it's written to the Christians in the principal city of that day. And indeed, through much of history, Rome. Church history and the book of Romans indicate that there were several different groups of Christians in the city who probably met at different places. We would say there were several churches in Rome, but that's not the way they looked at it. They thought there was one church in Rome, even though it met in different places. The church felt much more united then, perhaps, than it does now. Paul expressed his feelings about the Romans early in the book from chapter 1. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I mention you always in my prayers, asking that somehow by God's will I may at last succeed in coming to you. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I have often intended to come to you, but thus far have been prevented, in order that I may reap some harvest among you as well as among the rest of the Gentiles. So I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. It seems that Paul had not been to Rome and was not a part of starting that church, but he had a strong desire to preach the gospel to them. The gospel is this letter, and that's what makes it so good. The epistle lessons that I will use for our sermon texts go roughly from the beginning to the end of the book. Because Pentecost was late this year, we missed the first two Roman lessons from chapters 1 and chapter 3. To summarize those early chapters, I'm going to take two chapters of the book now and summarize it in about a sentence and a half. You might want to read it for yourself to see if what I say is somewhat true. But anyway, it's a discussion about how much God hates sin and the fact that we are all sinners and so we are hopelessly lost. We know that to be true. Every time we gather, we confess our sins and most of the time, I even leave a time of silence for you to think about your sins. I hope you do. I hope that you think about the times that you've been dishonest or selfish. I hope you think about the times that you've lied or coveted. I hope you think about the times that you've not loved God with your whole heart and soul and strength and mind. I hope you think about the times that you've not loved your neighbor as yourself. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's in Romans chapter 3, by the way. In short, we can have no hope in ourselves. Because of our sin, we stand condemned to eternal punishment. But we are not without hope. What is our hope? God alone. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. That's from Romans 6, by the way. In fact, what we need for our eternal salvation is to be children of God. How can we become children of God? Are we all ready? In one sense, we are because we are created by God, so we are his children. But to be his children in a saving sense is a different thing. Today, our epistle lesson talks about Abraham. Abraham, of course, is one of the most interesting people of the Old Testament. He was called by God. As near as I can tell, there was 
nothing worthy about him. There is no special reason God chose Abraham out of the whole world, but he did. He was well off, but that didn't really make him special. His only noticeable, outstanding characteristic was that he was a man of faith. Of course, we don't know that about Abraham when we meet him, but we find that Abraham, as good a guy as he was, was justified before God by his faith. He showed that faith time and again in his life. When God called him, he simply said to Abraham, I'm paraphrasing now, the Kleppi translation, pick up everything and everyone you have and go to a place that I'll show you. Then he made a promise to him that he'd make Abraham a great nation. Based on that, would you go? Just pick up and go. I'll show you. I'll tell you when to stop. He had faith in God. And he had faith in God's promises. He believed God's promise that he'd be given a land and be the father of a nation. He believed that he would have descendants like the stars of the heavens and like the sand on the seashore. He believed that promise even though he was far too old to have children. As good as dead, our text says. After Isaac was born, he believed that God would keep his promise even when God asked Abraham to sacrifice the only son that he had. Abraham had great faith. When we have faith, we are children of Abraham by faith. The more we trust God's promises, the more we are like Abraham. We are children of God by faith. He's given, he's given us the promise of eternal life in heaven, and when we believe that, we have it. We have it because of Christ's righteousness. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid the penalty for our sins. And so through faith, he gives us his own righteousness. Abraham's faith was counted as righteousness, and so is ours. When we believe in Jesus' saving work, we have the gift of Christ's robe of righteousness. We are counted by God as being holy through faith. When Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac, God had told him to do that. God stopped him at the last minute. And he gave him uh, a lamb to sacrifice instead. Jesus is the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We have life because of him. He was sacrificed instead. One day each one of us will be done with our earthly life. Abraham lived to be 120. I'm kind of thinking maybe most of us won't make it to that. But that's okay. When you get to the pearly gates, there is no quiz. I tell my confirmation class there, you don't have to recite the small catechism when you get to the pearly gates. I'd like to tell them you do. They'd study harder. But there isn't. There's no tally of good works. There's no DNA test to see how much Jewish blood you have. We are Abraham's children through faith. We are God's children through faith. God loves you. And if you believe that Jesus won heaven for you, then you have it. And it's that simple. Stand as we say it together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Christian Church, the community of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. O Lord, you strike down and you heal. Though we justly deserve your wrath for our sin, revise us, revive us and raise us up, that we may live before you forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayers. prayers. Almighty God, you desire steadfast love that your people would know you. Bless pastors, teachers, and all church workers, that your word would sound forth in abundance. Open the ears of all who hear to acknowledge your steadfast love. Be also with those who work this weekend to prepare for our Synod's Convention. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Father in heaven, by your grace, Abraham did not weaken in faith, but trusted your promises. Strengthen parents to persist in their callings, and train their children in your word and ways. Defend them from discouragement and apathy, and convince them that you are able to do what you have promised. Lord, in your mercy. Creator of all things, you call into existence what does not exist, and govern it for good. Remember those who have given authority among the nations, that the laws they administer might reflect your order and maintain peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, your Son came to heal the sick and forgive sinners. Hear our prayers for those who suffer in any way. We name them now. Restore them according to your gracious will and strengthen their faith in your faithfulness and love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Father in heaven, you made childless Abraham the father of many nations when his body was as good as dead, giving him faith to trust in the promised Christ. Strengthen our faith also to trust your promises despite our weaknesses and troubles. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Almighty God, your Son ate with sinners to call them into righteousness, and now feeds us in his supper that we might be forgiven. Prepare our hearts to partake of the sacrament and the altar with penitence and faith, and so depart in righteousness and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayers. prayers. Holy Father, receive our thanks for your kindness to Abraham, Sarah, and all the saints who have gone before us. Preserve us in faith and righteousness that we too may give you glory now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayers. prayers. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you've given us a foretaste of the feast to come. In the holy supper of your Son's body and blood, keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. Amen. second meeting last night. Uh, we talked about the finances of it, how that fits together, and, and I think there was good agreement from both churches uh, that uh, uh, we could make that work. Uh, there was uh, some discussion, nothing like spending an evening looking at two church budgets, right? But anyway, we did get it figured out, and I, I think it's a, a good uh, compromise between the two churches. We'll be meeting again in two weeks, right? On, on Tuesday, the 20, 20th. 20th, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, that meeting will be back down in North Branch. Last night we met here. Uh, we've kind of been alternating places where we meet. Uh, if you have questions about that, feel free to talk to me, or uh, there are some of our elders who are on that committee as well. They'd be happy to talk to you also if you'd like. Um, 
Uh, also, uh, we are uh, back having uh, adult Bible study on Sunday mornings following worship. Uh, we're studying a book called Dare to be Different, uh, which talks about living your life as a Christian so that people notice that you're not exactly like everyone else. Kind of a good thought uh, for us to have. Uh, anyway, that meets at about 10.30 on Sunday mornings. Uh, and we did set the date for VBS, July 17 through 20. So if you want to help with that, there's a meeting coming up right after this uh, service. Uh, so uh, if you'd like to help uh, talk to me or Tracy, who's running the whole thing. There's, that's no pressure, right, Tracy? You're just in charge of the whole deal. But no, it's, it's, it's fine. Uh, and it's all, all going well thus far, so we look forward to that. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you.